speaker for tonight, Lindsay Gertie, using WebGIS and crowdsourcing to locate an invasive species in Pima County, Arizona. <laughs> Again, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Lindsay Gidry, and my project was entitled Using WebGIS and Crowdsourcing to Locate an Invasive Species in Pima County, Arizona. Here in Pima County, we are part of the Sonoran Desert, one of the most biologically diverse deserts in the world. It is home to over 500 native species of animals and over 2,000 native species of plants. In addition to these non-native species, in addition to these native species, non-native species can also survive and thrive here. One such example of a non-native species is buffalo grass. Buffalo grass is able to successfully outcompete native plants for water, nutrients, and sunlight, which in effect reduces forage for native animals. Buffalo grass is also responsible for providing fuel for wildfires in the region. The purpose of my project is to aid the Southern Arizona Buffalo Grass Coordination Center in locating and monitoring buffalo grass within Pima County. I did this by creating a web mapping application that relies on crowdsourcing to survey parcels in eastern Pima County for the presence of buffalo grass. So what is crowdsourcing? A good definition for crowdsourcing is that it invites the public to participate in scientific thinking and data collection. I chose to use crowdsourcing for this project because surveying over 420,000 parcels over 5,500 5, square miles is a massive project. Participants were invited to the survey map through email, word of mouth, and the Southern Arizona Buff Grass Coordination website which is buffelgrass.org. Some pros, of con, pros and cons of using crowdsourcing is first off, it allows for the collection of large amounts of data over large areas in a short period of time. It also saves organizations time and money and can be continuously updated by participants. A downside to using crowdsourcing is that there is no way of predicting how many volunteers the project will recruit. Collecting data by amateurs is risky versus data collection by expert scientists. Uh, there is also the possibility that uh, the results will be inaccurate for the survey. In this particular project, there's a good probability that some buffalo grass will be misidentified. Uh, so what does buffalo grass look like? Buffalo grass has two life stages a green stage and a dormant stage. Both plants pictured are alive and well. Since buffalo grass can look like two different plants, it makes identification for the project that much more risky. Some quick facts about buffalo grass is that it's native to tropical and subtropical arid regions. Here's a map showing its world distribution. Uh, the areas in green represent its native distribution, which is located in Africa and Southern Asia. The red areas show where buffalo grass has been introduced. Buffalo grass was introduced to the United States in the early 1900s. It was planted in Pima County in the 1940s by the U.S. Soil Conservation Service as livestock feed. The original planting of buffalo grass was located in the Santa Rita Experimental Range in the Santa Rita Mountains south of Tucson, as shown by the Red Polygon. By 1954, buffalo grass was found growing outside of its native its experimental range. Since then, buffalo grass has been growing exponentially throughout Pima County. By about 1975, buffalo grass spread 100 miles west to the Oregon Pipe National Cactus Monument. And in 1994, it covered over 25 square miles of the park. A major issue created by buffalo grass is that it has the ability, 
is that it has made wildfires common in an area where wildfires are rare. Typically, native vegetation in the desert is intermittent and spread out. But with the invasion of buffalo grass, the landscape has been filled in. Because there is so much ground vegetation, fires are now able to spread over large areas. Here are a couple photographs of a buffalo grass invaded hillside before and after its removal. The photo on the right is what the desert should look like with bare ground and sparse vegetation. But as you can see from the photo on the left, buffalo grass has filled in the spaces between native vegetation. This increase in ground cover is how buffalo grass helps spread wildfires. Again, the buffalo grass invaded site on the left has plants in close proximity than in the right photo. After its removal, the vegetation is much more spread out. To create the buffalo grass survey map, I use a Pima County parcel shape file from the Pima County GIS database. I use a state plane coordinate system, Arizona Central FIPS. Uh, to first, to create the map, I created a new personal file geo database and I created a domain buffalo grass presence values. Then I created four values for the domain. The four values were per parcel not surveyed, buffalo grass present, buffalo grass absent, and buffalo grass indeterminate. Indeterminate just means that for one reason or another, the surveyor was unable to make a positive or negative buffalo grass identification within the parcel. I then added the parcel shapefile to the geo database, deleted all the fields, and added six new fields, which are shown in the table below. Four out of the six fields are editable. The edit date and editor fields cannot be modified. They use the editor tracking tool and are automatically updated when a parcel's attributes are entered. I then assigned the domain buffalo grass presence values to the buffalo grass presence field and use the field calculator to set all the parcels to a default value of parcel not surveyed. Next, I created a new polygon feature class, used the editor toolbar and, toolbar and drew a polygon surrounding the parcels I wanted to include in the survey. I then clipped the Pima County parcels to the survey extent polygon. I initially started off with all the parcels in Pima County. Then I drew, the ex drew an extent around the par only the parcels that I wanted to include. And this is the resulting map with only the eastern parcels selected. The reason I chose only eastern Pima County is because the majority of the population is located here. With a larger population, the pool for survey participants increases, and also because a buffalo grass field fire in an area with a large popu population can have devastating consequences. I then published the map to ArcGIS Online. I had to create two maps, one for a desktop and one for mobile. I created two different maps because the parcels will only draw when zoomed in on a small area. The scale for the desktop version can be slightly smaller than the mobile version simply due to the fact that a cell phone cannot handle as much data as a computer. I then created a web application for the desktop version and published it. So what happens if you're not zoomed in close enough to see the parcels? There is a tiled feature service that will di that's displayed, which shows you the survey extent and also lets the user know that the application is loaded and working. The results of the web mapping application is that so far over 23,000 parcels have been surveyed. The majority of the parcels were surveyed through a grant with SABCC. The map is accessible to the public through ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS mobile app, and buffelgrass.org. 
The SABCC also added an editable feature layer for points, polygons, and lines for which you can map the exact location of Buffelgrass within a parcel. Here are some photographs. Oops, sorry. See, the majority of the parcels surveyed are located in the center of the survey area, as shown by the red and green polygons. When you zoom in, you can see these parcels are surrounding the Tucson International Airport. This is because the SABCC grant project was located in this area. In conclusion, the project's overall success will be will take time to be evaluated. Its success will be measured by the number of participants and by the accuracy of Buffelgrass identification. The overall goal of this project is that the database created from the web map will help reduce and eliminate Buffelgrass in eastern Pima County. Um, I will give a short demonstration now of how the web mapping application works. The web map is accessible through ArcGIS Online by searching for Buffelgrass Survey Map, and it's also accessible through the SABCC website, Buffelgrass.org. Right now I'm going to use the Buffelgrass Coordination Center's website. To get to the map, you can go to Resources, Mapping, and Buffelgrass Map. Let's see. If this was your first time using the application, there are instructions. Um, but since I've used it before, I'll just go ahead and do it. Um, first, I enter, I'm going to enter a parcel or an address where no buffalo grass is present. So it zooms in on the location. You select editor, the parcel you want to survey, and you can fill, fill in the fields. For the observer, I type in my name, Buffelgrass presence, which Buffelgrass is present in this parcel. Uh, the Buffelgrass Coordination Center also added a field where you can select any action taken for the Buffelgrass. Uh, right now I'm just selecting monitor because I, it's not being manually removed or treated with herbicide. You can enter any notes you have about it and then you can email, enter your email address. Okay. You also have the op option of adding a photo, which I actually have. Right, once you're done, you can just select legend to close out the editor. You can select the parcel that you edited and all your information appears. If you wanted to view the picture, you can just click on the attachment and it loads a picture of the buffalo grass. And it's pretty much just as simple as that. 
your results are automatically saved to the web map. Right. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Yes. Why did you choose this project? I actually uh, worked with the Southern Arizona Buffalo Grass Coordination Center and they came up with a project. Yes. Why did they introduce Buffalo Grass in the first place? Uh, it was drought resistant and it can withstand heavy grazing by cattle, so it's used a lot in the cattle industri industry to feed livestock. Uh huh. Uh, is it the same as buffalo grass? No. You can't 